like I've gone back in time. Oh my God, all my glutes. This is torture. Oh. <laughs> Welcome to the 1890s. Now you're probably wondering, why am I dressed like this? Well, today I'm gonna to be riding all the way from London to Brighton, following in the wheels of a pioneering female cyclist who, despite adversity, set out to pave the way for women's cycling. And well, I'm gonna have plenty of time to tell you all about it. So, let's go. admit these are not at my bloomers or my waistcoat. They were actually handmade by Dr. Kat Jungnickel, a senior lecturer of sociology at the Goldsmith University of London. She also featured in a GCN Plus documentary, Trailblazers, and she's going to tell us a story about a very inspirational woman, Tessie Reynolds. And she actually rode this very route, but from Brighton to London and back in 1893. Tessie Reynolds is kind of remarkable. She was born in 1877. She comes from the Isle of Wight and she's the eldest of 11 siblings. So she comes from quite a big family and they're all really sporty and active. And her parents also were very involved with the cycling community in the area. So she has quite a really interesting life, but she's particularly renowned for something that happened on the 10th of September in 1893. At 5 a.m. Tessie gets up and she cycles from Brighton to London and back again. And she does it in a remarkable time. The fastest that had actually been achieved up until that point. She does it in, she does 120 miles in eight hours and 38 minutes. Now I've had some strange looks this morning. I've turned a few heads, but it's probably half as many heads that have turned as a woman riding a bike back in 1890. One of the reasons that um, Tessie's remarkable achievement attracted so much attention was because people just weren't used to seeing women out in public engaging in such strenuous endurance kind of activities. Um, although things have been changing towards the end of the century, there was still this stubborn idea that exercise was not necessary or even perhaps even unhealthy for women. Um, for decades, medical practitioners had been arguing quite vehemently that women only had a limited amount of energy and they should reserve this for much more important kind of matrimonial duties rather than kind of like um, uh, wasting this for leisurely or more trivial pursuits such as cycling. Ollie would not approve of my bloomers. Not aero. So I'm about 14 miles into my ride now, left London, and on some nicer, quieter country roads. And the road surface these days is not perfect, but it is a hell of a lot better than what Tessie had to deal with in 1893. I can only imagine it was probably gravel roads that she was riding on mainly, and there probably wasn't the most direct route there like I've got today. We all know riding on gravel and bumpy roads is a lot harder than the nice smooth tarmac. So my first impression of this clothing was, it's all right, it's quite comfortable, but as soon as you get on the bike and start going quite hard and pedaling really fast, it's not very comfortable. I mean, the, I can literally feel these bloomers been blown in the wind backwards and slowing me down. And this corset or waistcoat is a little bit restrictive on the lungs. So breathing, when you're breathing heavily on the bike, it's not very easy. Oh, not very good on the hills either. 
Surprisingly though, this clothing was actually seen as very progressive compared to what women usually wore in the 1800s. Women wore a lot of clothes in the 1890s. The style of clothing they were wearing consisted of um, full A-line skirts that touched the ground, um, up to seven pounds of heavy petticoats. Um, they wore tightly laced corsets, they wore tailored blouses. So you can imagine just all of that heavy laid materials um, were vastly in incompatible with the moving machinery of the bicycle. So nothing was going to stop women from cycling once they got a sense of the freedom and independence that the bicycle promised, but it was quite difficult to cycle in all of those clothes. So the question was what to wear when they're on their bikes. So some of them continued to ride in all of those clothes. Others um, started to wear what was called rational dress. Rational dress reformers um, argued for what they called rational dress over irrational fashion. They basically tried to get rid of um, those long um, skirts and petticoats, maybe just shorten the skirt or get rid of the skirt altogether and wear a pair of um, knickerbockers or bloomers and just get rid of other kind of like tightly laced or constraining clothing to enable women just to have more active and um, you know uh, freeing lives basically. But it could expose the wearer to um, different forms of prejudice and harassment. She was really challenging gender norms of the time. Um, people weren't used to seeing kind of women out on their own, sometimes unchaperoned. So some parts of society sometimes threw things at them, like would hurl uh, abuse or would um, uh, throw sticks and stones. You know, they suffered kind of a har harassment in, in physical ways. They were denied entry into places. They were gossiped about. So sometimes you had to be quite brave to ride your bicycle in um, conventional clothing and even more so if you're wearing some of these new radical new forms of clothing. So it's just started drizzling a bit now unfortunately and at this point in any in a normal ride I'd probably get my rain cape out and put it on but they didn't really have that sort of stuff back then and this blouse is not waterproof. They did have wool which was weather resistant until it got very very wet and then they just got soaked so yeah i'm just gonna have to make do nothing i can do about it now oh my poor blouse what tassie did it was extremely impressive for a 16 year old and for a 16 year old nowadays to do this ride in that time would be phenomenal but the bike tassie rode was extremely different to what we ride today. No electronic shifting back then. Another reason that um, Tessie attracted so much attention was because she rode a diamond frame bicycle. And this is a bicycle with a top tube, very similar to many of the bicycles we still ride today. But at the time, it was really known as a man's bicycle. Women were expected to ride ladies' bicycles that were missing the top tube, were stepped through, that was more accommodating to these long skirts and heavy laid petticoats. But they also tended to come with um, chain guards and wheel guards to keep the material from flapping in the wheels and in the chain, which was good except when you wanted to go fast. You know, and lots of women really did complain about the fact those bicycles were heavy and a bit cumbersome and just their strength was compromised. So of course Tessie, if she had the choice, she would have been riding kind of the, the best, highest quality bicycle at the time, which would have been a man's bicycle, so she was on that. So this bike I'm riding today it's quite similar to what Tessie would have ridden, although this is a modern version because all the bikes I found that were from 1893 were not rideable or vintage, so you couldn't ride them. So I've just gone through the little town of Ditchling, not too far to go now until I reach Brighton. Just about surviving, but I have one big problem to negotiate. A big old hill, and the hills I've gone up previously, I found them hard, but this is nothing compared to what I'm about to say. So I hope you enjoy me suffering up this hill with me and my five gears, not very easy gears. I mean, I'm struggling already. And we have we're not even going uphill that much. Whew. When 
mean, this, this climb alone is going to take me eight hours. <laughs> oh my God. Oh God, I have no words for this. Absolutely no words. This is torture. Oh, oh my glutes. Oh God, this is extremely painful. Oh, I mean, that was one of the toughest things I've done, but I didn't have to walk and I was convinced that I was gonna have to walk up that, but I was told there was gonna be beautiful views up here. Maybe not today. At least I made it to the top. Quite proud of that one. Her accomplishments, her radical clothing and her confidence um, really kind of must have been incredibly inspiring for lots of people um, to keep kind of challenging some of these conventional norms that were otherwise limiting and restricting the ways in which women could be in and move through public space. And there's a great quote which came out of Bicycle News that said, Miss Reynolds has accomplished more in three weeks in stirring up opinion about ladies' rational dress than could otherwise have been achieved in as many years. Right, I'm hoping that this is actually the top and there is no more hills to come, but hopefully it's going to be all the way downhill into Brighton from here because I'm not sure I can handle any more hills, but I'm going to get going. It's actually quite cold up here now and um, this isn't the warmest. Right, let's go. I can see the sea. Oh. So I have made it to Brighton and just behind me there is the aquarium where Tessie started and finished her ride and I've done this ride today in just under five hours and that was really tough going and to think Tessie has done double what I've done today is absolutely phenomenal and I've got a better bike I've got better road surfaces but not better legs Tessie must have been so happy when she reached the finish line she had given it all that day and done it in record breaking time or so she thought so Tessie covered 120 miles and she did it in a new record of 8 hours and 38 minutes. However, because she was a woman, this remarkable achievement wasn't officially recognised by cycle racing bodies. And I think it's great that we're talking about this now and we're celebrating it, but I think it's really important to use this as another way to ask questions about the histories that we tell. Who else don't we know about? What other incredible achievements have they accomplished, putting themselves into the public domain like um, Tessie did, that would have required quite a lot of courage and bravery, as well as you know a lot of energy to kind of do the work that she was doing. Tessie must have been really devastated when she found out that she didn't get the record. And it's really not fair. She got the quickest time, so she should have got that record. But it just goes to show how much of an inspiration she is to put herself through that. And she really has paved the way in women's cycling. But hopefully you have enjoyed this video. And if you want to find out more about women's cycling and the history behind it, then make sure to check out the GCN Plus documentary Trailblazers. And it'd be really interesting to find out what else Tessie went through and achieved in her cycling life. But unfortunately, it's not documented. But for now, it's time for me and my uh, bloomers to find my way home. Somehow, with lots more strange looks. I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>